Hey guys, my name is Dave and welcome to another video. So, today I'm going to be talking about something that I'm shocked just came to my mind today. Many of you who watch this channel may already know I'm a very descriptive person. But there are also people out there who are very vague. It, it can be very dangerous to be too vague about something because it can cause misunderstanding. I know this because I'm a descriptive person and sometimes it's hard to understand individuals who are too vague about things. But how about the alternative? Is it, do, is there a point where you can be too descriptive? Well, actually, yes. There is always a soft spot for everything. A soft center. Admittedly, there are some of these, some topics I don't have the right to talk about on that front because I don't hit that soft center. This is not one of those, those topics, at least in my opinion. I'm a descriptive person, but when I need to be, I can narrow it down. Sometimes it takes me some time, but I at least understand that. It can be dangerous to be too descriptive about something if you're trying to explain things that should be simple yes or no answer type things. A good example of this, and it's been a while since this has been the case, but YouTube, as of about, I think like five, I think it was like 2015 to, through 2018, they weren't very descriptive. They were still building certain circumstances. They were still going through a lot of aspects, or at least Google was, uh, since Google owns YouTube in the long haul, technically. So when people tried to ask questions, up until late 2019, there was so much confusion. A good example of this, since I can relate to it in a way, um... In late 2019, without revealing who it is, somebody had actually asked if they could make gaming content without doing their own commentary. That sounds wrong. Commentary. And just do the gaming music instead. The response that they got originally didn't really answer the question. It just explained in far too much detail what the terms say, which is basically, in short, if you're going to use someone else's content, or at least this is the case here in the US, United States, if you're going to use someone else's content, if they don't mind it, if, if showing playthrough of the game itself alone, if they don't care, by all means, go ahead. But if they see it and they want to call a claim on it, that's where you're in trouble. And you can risk a ban for that as well. I try to be very careful about this stuff. In fact, for the most part, I have of the 1,200 plus videos that are on this channel, seven of them, only seven, have copyright claims and they're all for like introduction or outro songs that I can't really control. Um... Luckily, it's not a strike, and it gets bypassed. It is very few numbers, though. <clears throat> now, for me, this isn't really an issue because I do commentary, which is allowed. In fact, right in front of me, I have Google Help talking about this video game and software content on YouTube specifically because that's where they go for Google-type release content, visual content in the first place. Um, it says, and I quote, What can't I monetize? Without the appropriate license from the publisher, use, uh, use of video game software, user interface must be minimal. Which, this right here is actually why the most, end quote for a temporary amount of time, first of all. But this is why I only do 20 minutes when it's a shorter game, 40 minutes when it's a longer game, and... Two and a half hours to three hours at most when it's a live stream. Because they're all gaming, 
but I try to be careful. And if they don't, if a creator doesn't, or if a publisher does not like it when people showcase their content, I will not put it up. For example, Catherine Fullbody was a playthrough that was on my channel at a point, and unfortunately, at least worldwide, there was a section that it was like, nope, we're not doing that. We are not allowing it. Luckily for me, the only sections that did that were in Japan and I believe one other area that was in Asia as well. However, here in the U.S., Atlas in the U.S., bless their souls, they did not mind. In fact, Capcom's the same way. Um, there, there are a lot. Nintendo, Sony, which I'm surprised about, but still. I'm just kidding. I'm not really surprised. I am happy about it, though. Movies, again, are a good example, too. You cannot showcase, like, movie clips, and everyone knows this at this point. This has become crystal clear since 2012, I think. Unless you're the actual team that put together the film. In which case, go, on, go ahead, by all means, you have those rights. But... I guess within this long example, um, I just feel like YouTube is the best example for like being too descriptive. In the long haul, the golden YouTube user who was actually responding to this guy that I originally talked about, they could have simply said, as long as the person who developed the game doesn't mind, go ahead. If the person who developed the game does mind, then don't. It'll benefit you. Simple as that. That's not stupidly descriptive. That doesn't bring unnecessary details into the situation. But it's also not a vague, yeah, no. Because when you do that, I'm going to revert back to this as well. Because it's a very, very, very good example. Because they were too descriptive the first time, the person was like, well, I see other people do it, so why can't I? And they seem to be just fine. Well, this is what the, creator, the responder should have said. Did they show the whole game or simple small battles? Square Enix is a good example of this. If you were to showcase an entire playthrough of Kingdom Hearts, for example... Um, or Final Fantasy VII Remake, for example. If you showed the full playthrough in one lengthy video, you could get in deep trouble for it. Because it's for the game and for the music. For, in their eyes, it could be for the music, for the game, um, for the characters. Not for your own personal content. They don't know that. They don't know you're just doing it just to showcase your own gameplay. But that's why I do commentary. First of all, because I want to make it funnier. And it would be with my own commentary, I feel like. Uh, for the most part. But second of all, it would show the creators, the developers, that you're not doing it for the game itself or for the music or for anything like that. It would show them that you're gently trying to do it by their own accords. In fact, the reason I use Square Enix as an example is they started using their own terms of service saying, you can stream or let's play these on platforms so long as you're not doing it for blank reasons. And I mean, that's why you do it in split parts for one. And two, that's why you do commentary. That's very, it's descriptive, yes, but no. What I just did, everything I just listed, if the person had said that, but in probably less words, 
I guarantee that's where the conversation would have ended. Basically, the the person who was responding would have just ended up going, so you can, under circumstances, under the circumstance that they are okay with it, that the creators of the actual original game are fine with it. End of story. It's a small, short answer, but it still gives you the one thing that you need to know. Now let's do this. Let's turn around and put it this way. Content is the best way to go about this. Let's do reaction content. Not something YouTube or Google has said to another user, but user versus user. One of the things that you have to keep in mind when it comes to reactions, some people like it, some people allow it, but there are some people who don't. And then there are some who are in the dead center. If you do not define well enough, not in too much detail, but as long as you're not vague, people will understand how much they're allowed to do. Camila Cuevas, for example, who created the Undertale fan base series, um, Glitch Tale, I think is what it's called. It's been a while. I think that's what it's called. Possibly. At first, she was just creating it. You know, just for the heck of it. Everyone reacted to it. She didn't seem to mind. And she still doesn't, to a specific degree. Camila Cuevas was the perfect example of the kind of thing that's the soft center. She says, you can just have a watermark of my icon over the content. That way people know it is my content. That is the perfect way to say yes as long as which is the best way to describe something like that. For me, for example, I have reacted to a couple things, but to a dangerous level. Music was one of them. I also had some streams that had D9's content like right here while I was doing it, and that put me in trouble. So I removed them. Because both of those, it wasn't just, it never, I don't remember ever reading in terms of service. And I read that very, 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 very thoroughly. Or, and like pretty much all the other things as well. I read all that very thoroughly and said, okay, what should I do? What should I remove? It doesn't feel like I need to. But I pointed those out. I was like, oh, wow. Well, thanks for the add-on. As you guys can tell, I'm corning this on YouTube a lot. But the reason for this is because of the factor that there's a lot that's happened on YouTube that's going to happen in the future as well. Hopefully for the better next time. Now I'm going to stray from that and give a different example. Descriptive versus vague can be a very, very hard thing to balance. When I first met Pink Fox, she was a very vague person. She lived in an area where everyone was basically that way. Me? I was like the opposite side of the spectrum. I was an extremely descriptive person. Honestly, thanks to my dad. A little bit to my mom, but more to my dad, just because I've spent more time around him over the past year and a half because I used to work with him. And he would always be very detailed and very descriptive of me. And the two would clash, and we'd be like, okay. Before Pink Fox and I even proposed to her, um, we had to figure out exactly how we were going to communicate. And it took us a long time to get reach a soft center. And to be honest, there's still some stuff that we're trying to figure out to balance out to that soft center. Does it create arguments? No. Disagreements, sure. But, like, nothing that would cause yelling. Just the better word for the disagreement one would actually be debate. She'd say one thing. I'd understand it, but I would respond with how I normally talk, trying to lay out a bunch of different situations that could help it, and she would miss half of it because she's not used to descriptive people. She's gotten better since the start, though. Way better. Um, the 
reason I can tell is because the last time we had this kind of debate thing, it felt more like a generic conversation, if anything else. And it's something I'm actually kind of happy about. That's the outcome of finding a good, soft center. Not being dangerously descriptive and not being dangerously vague. There are other examples I can give, but the two I just provided are probably the best I can give because they relate closest to my personal life. And it's something that... Uh, where a lot had been thrown out, and it's very hard to find good examples unless you can relate to it off the bat. And the only reason, like, the first example, which lasted much longer than the second one I was able to do, is just because I had to deep hunt for details, and it took me, well, to be honest, it took me an hour almost to find it. Anyways, I don't know. What would you consider yourself? Would you consider yourself descriptive, a descriptive person, or a vague person? Let me know in the comments below. Also, I want to clarify, no hate in any kind of way towards... Any kind of individual who is either one end or the other. Um, and that includes Google. Because honestly, Google has done a lot more for me than I could probably lay out. But at the same time, there are, there's always room for improvement. I mean, for heaven's sake, even they recognize this. Because YouTube has been updated so many times, I can't even give you a number. So they know that. This is more of a kind of video talking about the whole balance between the two. As far as like individuals go, if you're a very descriptive person, that's fine. If you're a very vague person, cool. Go you. Just be careful when you talk to the opposing. Make sure if you're talk if you're a descriptive person, for example, talking to a vague person or a vague person talking to a descriptive person, make sure you're ready and prepped to hear that other person's end. It's the best way you can go about things. But anyway, yeah, I'm going to leave this here. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if you like this video, make sure to push that like button. And so far, you can't sing anymore. And if you really like to consider subscribing to the channel, got a suggestion for anything you'd like discussed on here, let us know in the comments below. Want to check out anything that's been discussed prior to this? Click the large discussion and rant video where some of them might not even be relevant at this point. Most of them might. I don't know. It's up to you. Um, why not check out the link to that playlist? There's plenty, plenty of them you can check out. Or, I don't know. Maybe you'd enjoy the video that's on my other side where uh, the platform will give you a better idea of something you may enjoy more. In the meantime, I'm going to head off. Thank you guys so much once again for tuning into this video, and I hope to see all of you guys in another one. Catch you all later.